Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Again, it's good to be with you today as we discuss another portion of God's Word. You know, as we try to serve God, we oftentimes become very discouraged. We get discouraged because of the opposition that comes against us, the temptations of life and so forth. Well, this is nothing new. People have been persecuted and mistreated and endure a lot throughout the history, of, especially of Christianity. And yet they did not become discouraged. We think about the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the beginning of that chapter, Paul discusses the overwhelming odds that was against him. And yet he said he did not lose heart. Now how is it that he could suffer so much? If you look at that list, you'll find it was innumerable things, much more than we ever have to endure. And yet we become discouraged so many times that many times people quit. And yet Paul endured so much more, and yet he did not quit. What's the difference? Well, I think he begins to tell us the reason why he could endure what he did, beginning in verse 16. Look at verse 16 of chapter 4. There Paul says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Indeed, the outer man or the physical man is perishing. One day we're going to all die and go back to the dust from which we came. In Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7, the wise man talked about the ultimate end of all mankind when he says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the Spirit will return to God who gave it. Yes, one day we're going to die. But the Spirit will live on, and hopefully it will return to God who gave it. You see, death should not frighten us, because for the faithful, it's only a doorway to a life of eternal happiness. But nevertheless, our outward man, our physical man, is perishing. Even before death, we see the process of aging and the slow deterioration of our bodies. We are all going to get old. Paul himself said that his flesh was wasting away. Indeed, Paul faced discouragement from many sides, both within the church and without the church, and yet he did not lose heart. He said the inward man are being renewed day after day. Now, how could he not lose heart? Well, one thing was prayer. He was depending on prayer to talk with God. You know, the world, many times, thinks prayer is basically useless. It thinks it's the pitiful cry of the feeble and the weak. Only the weak ones, uh, the ones who cannot live without a crutch, so to speak, will ever engage in prayer. They think it is silly to talk to someone you cannot see and yet somehow think he's going to help. And yet we find a promise indeed that God does help those who are his children. In 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, Peter said, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Yes, God listens to the righteous prayers. His ears are open to their prayers. We can receive the help from God that we need. So we cannot lose heart because we know we have the help of God. And we also do not lose heart because we know that one day we're going to reap. As I've already said, death is not the end, but only the beginning of a life of eternal happiness. Paul mentioned the same thing in Galatians 6 and verse 9 when he said, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Notice Paul said, Do not become discouraged. Why? Because one day, he said, we will reap. 
but only if you do not become discouraged so much that you quit. But we have the promise, indeed, that we will obtain a great reward. Christ should be our example. The writer of Hebrews addressed Christians who were tired. They were tempted to go back into Judaism, to become unfaithful. And he sought to encourage these Christians in 12 verse 3 when he says, For consider him who endured such hostilities from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Notice he says, look to Jesus. Look to his example. Look what he endured. And by looking to him, then that would encourage us not to become discouraged. You see, while our outward man is perishing, our inward man, as Paul said, is being renewed daily and growing stronger. The spiritual part gets stronger while the physical part grows weaker. And why is it that we cannot, or we, our inward man is being renewed? Because he goes on in verse 17 and says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Notice two things that Paul says here concerning about our present life. He says our affliction is light. Now, if Paul could say that, as much as he suffered, then certainly we can say that. Now, afflictions may seem heavy, especially when we're called upon to bear them, but they are light in connection with the eternal reward waiting for us. He also said our affliction is light in the sense that it is limited. It's only for a short period of time. We do not need to fear those things because fear makes things uh, ex makes us exaggerate the things which we perceive to be a threat. You see, fear magnifies afflictions. In the dark, you know, you hear everything. And in the dark, when you hear a sound, but you have no idea what it is, then, of course, your imagination begins to run wild. And you think about all the things that it could be. But most of the time, it is absolutely nothing. You see, fear magnifies it. Fear keeps us from trusting God. But here, Paul said, we should trust God. Why? Because our affliction is light. And it's only for a moment. It is only temporary. But while we are suffering now, it is working for us a far more exceeding. In other words, while our affliction here is light, our eternal reward is great compared to that. And it is eternal. In contrast to something that is temporary, our reward is eternal. Therefore, we do not fear what happens to us here because in comparison to what is eternal, uh, the reward waiting for us, then it is light and only temporary. Paul here is attempting to emphasize that the weight of glory is beyond our calculation. You know, sometimes we sing a song, heaven will surely be worth it all. Indeed it is. That's a promise that we can rest assured that heaven will be worth it all. So therefore, do not lose heart because we have a reward waiting for us. But the way we can keep from being discouraged is to not focus on the temporary things of life, but focus on the eternal. Paul said in verse 16 of chapter 4, or 7, excuse me, verse 18 of chapter 4, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. If we do not look at the things that are seen, then we can better focus on the eternal things of life. It's not easy to take, keep our eyes off the things which are seen. Indeed, we look at the things all around us, and it's hard not to look at them. If Paul had looked at those things, then he could have very well have said, life is terrible, life is horrible. But he did not say that. 
because he was not focusing on the temporary things. He was focusing on the eternal things. You know, when a storm destroys your home and all your worldly possessions, it is indeed very hard not to think that you have lost everything. But even if you lose those things, you have not lost everything because you still have your relationship with God. You still have the eternal reward waiting for us. And that is something that no one or no thing can ever take away from us. We do not need to focus our attention on this world because everything in this world is only temporary. You see, everything you see today will one day be gone. All your houses, all your clothes, your food, the riches that you might look upon, even your most beloved family member, even ourselves. One day they're all going to pass away. But that doesn't mean that we will lose everything. Indeed, what's really waiting for us is eternal, and it will never pass away. And that's why we can be encouraged by a future revelation of the unseen and eternal. God has described for us in some ways a description of heaven. Now, it cannot really give us a real good description. We cannot even imagine the good things that's waiting for us. But God has revealed to us in, in very limited ways what our finite mind can comprehend, that is just a glimpse of the future realm. One day we will see heaven with all its beauty and wonder. Won't it be wonderful there? That's another song that sometimes we sing with those words in it. Won't it be wonderful there? Yes, indeed, heaven indeed will be wonderful. And that's why we keep our focus on heaven. We keep our focus on things which are not seen. Paul said in Colossians 3 and verse 2, says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Why do we set our minds on things above? Because they are eternal. And all the things in this world, they're only temporary. So we have a choice. We have something that is eternal on one hand. Well, on the other hand, we have something that is temporary. So what should you face or you base your attention on? Well, obviously, I think everyone will agree that we should focus our attention on the things that's going to last, things that are eternal. Well, that's exactly what Paul is saying. Look not on the things of the world because they are temporary. Look on things that are above, because it is eternal. You see, Paul furthermore said in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Notice Paul starts out in that verse by saying, We know. We know that if this house, this earthly body is destroyed, which it will be, then Paul said we have another house, another building waiting for us, but this is from God. It's a house that's not made with hands. It is a house that is eternal. We have that promise, and that promise is just as sure as God is because God will not break his promises. But remember, these promises are reserved for those who do not faint, those who do not fear, those who do not focus on the temporary things of this world. So today, then, I encourage you to ask yourself, where is your attention? Where is your focus of life? You see, for so many people, our main focus is the things of this world. How much money do we have? How good a job do I have? How much things do I have around me so that I can enjoy a great deal of pleasure? While some of those things are not necessarily bad, we need to focus on the eternal things. We need to focus on the spiritual thing because that is eternal. Why focus on temporary things when the eternal is obviously so much more valuable? So I urge you today, keep your attention on spiritual things. Keep your attention on God. 
and if we keep our attention on God and put Him first in our lives, then we can rest assured we have a great reward waiting for us. And we can rest assured heaven will surely be worth it all. Thank you. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth. And you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15. Our study Madurai 625016 Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420. 9244214421. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you.